Darktable 4 has a new algorithm in the Highlight Reconstruction module. And in this episode, we're going to have a look at just that. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 117 of Understanding Darktable. I will confess to having been struggling a little bit over the last month to sit down and record a video. And you know what, I'll go into it at the end of this video. Let's, let's just get on with what we're here for. Okay, so Highlight Reconstruction. As the name suggests, it's designed to reconstruct parts of the image which have had their highlights clipped, either on all three channels or on a per channel basis. Now, in the past, there have been three options. Clip highlights, which has been the default, Reconstruct in LCH, which personally I have always felt did a much better job. I've never understood why that wasn't the default, but anyway. And Reconstruct Color. Now we have a new option, which is Guided Laplacians. And if we go to the manual, we will see Guided Laplacians uses an algorithm derived from Diffuse or Sharpen module to replicate details from valid channels, in other words, R, G, or B, which are not clipped, into clipped channels, and to propagate color gradients from valid surrounding regions into clipped regions. So in other words, where there is clipping, look for valid color data in the surrounding area and blend that into the clipped area. This is a slow and computationally intensive method designed for maximum smoothness and seamless blending of the reconstructed regions into their neighborhood and is designed primarily, this is important, to reconstruct spotlights and specular reflections. So if you've shot an image out on a, you know, gray overcast day and you've metered for what's in the foreground and as a result, that big, grey, dull, soft box of a sky has blown out and clipped, this is not the tool for you. Guided Laplacians is designed to reconstruct spotlights and specular reflections. So just bear that in mind. And the last sentence, sorry Fuji users, this mode is available for Bayer sensors only. Okay, so with all of that said, I've got this image from my road trip back from Western Australia with Dad's car. Out in the middle of nowhere, late afternoon sun, and if we zoom in here, we will see that there are a couple of specular highlights off the rim of the car, off the rim of the wheel, and a couple of bits on the bumper here. And if I turn on the raw clipping indicator, we can see that there is definitely clipped data on the green channel and then on the green and blue channels. It doesn't look like the red channel clipped though. So we've definitely got some clipping that we need to deal with. If we look at this image without any highlight reconstruction at all, that's what it looks like. We get these horrible magenta splotches wherever there was clipped data. All right, so we turn the highlight reconstruction back on. Clip the highlights, we'll do exactly that. Wherever there is clipping, it basically just goes to white, but it doesn't really look white. It's got this kind of horrible greeny yellow tint to it. That's my interpretation anyway. If we have a look at the reconstruct in LCH, that actually looks more like a white highlight and to my eye is a much better look than the clip highlights look. Reconstruct color tries to you know, rebuild the color information from what is in the surrounding regions. So you might think, well, how's that different from guided Laplacians? Well, so glad you asked. If we go to guided Laplacians, we'll see we've got a lot more options to choose from here in the module. Obviously, we've got our clipping threshold. That allows us to say, at what point do we want to start reconstructing clipped highlights? And believe it or not, 100% isn't the obvious choice. I mean, it is the default, it's the starting point, but you can actually go to either positive or negative values from there. So if we go to negative values, then we're saying, I want you to take those pixels which are 
a little bit less than fully clipped and allow the reconstruction to happen across those pixels as well. If we go above a value of one, then we're saying allow the outermost clipped pixels to remain as they are and only work on those that are geographically furthest removed from any non-clipped pixels, if that makes sense. Next up, we've got the noise level. Now, I'm already at 100% on this particular image, so it might be a bit difficult to see this, but what this allows us to do is to introduce some random Gaussian noise into the clipped pixels just to try and break up the monotony of this big expanse of clipped data. Because I'm zoomed in at 100%, it's a little hard to see the noise on this particular image. Like even if I crank that right up, it's very difficult to see. Before I realized that this guided Laplacian's algorithm was designed for specular highlights. I was mucking around with this image here, which I shot in Nevada ugh, 15 years ago. Now, obviously, massive amount of highlight because I've got, you know, sun blaring straight into the lens. And in this instance, you can actually see what the noise does. So there we've got no noise. We've got this very smooth magenta sky. If we crank up the noise, we can see that sort of Gaussian, uh, you know, noise added to all of the pixels. So the intent there is just to try and break up the monotony of all that clipped data. But that's not really the type of thing we're meant to be working on here. So come back to here. So we've got the noise level. So you can dial that in as broadly or as subtly as you you know, deem necessary for the image that you're working on. Iterations. This is where it gets computationally intensive. What this is doing is saying, here's my region of clipped data, and I'm going to try and blend from surrounding regions into this region in order to try and reconstruct a bit of, you know, tonality and colour for that clipped region. After it's done it one time, you can then say, well, I want to go a second instance. And so what it will then do is take the result of that first attempt and use that as the input for then doing it a second time. So each time with each iteration, a little bit more of your clipped data gets removed from the algorithm because previous surrounding regions have been used to try and recreate or, yeah, to rebuild a little bit of that clipped data. So your, your clipped area is slowly getting smaller and smaller with each iteration. But buyer beware, <laughs> every iteration adds more computational cycles to the process. So it does get a bit slow and unwieldy if you're not on a high-end machine. So experiment, see what you can live with in terms of processing time, and obviously, you know, assess the results as you progress with more iterations. If I crank that up to seven, I really don't see much of a difference. So why would I bother? And then in paint a flat color. And I've got to Confess, I don't really understand what this is doing because it doesn't seem to add any color to the regions that are clipped. I don't notice any difference between 0% and 100%. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong there. But to be honest, I still think reconstructing LCH does a better job. Now, that's... My personal opinion, I'm not saying I'm right. For me, you know, that blows out to more like white, but with a hint of the colour of the car, which in this in instance is a sort of a yellowish colour because of the colour of the sunlight that was hitting the car at the time. To me, that's a more believable outcome than the magenta look that I get by using guided Laplacians. So... I don't know. Each to their own, people. For me, I think I will stick with reconstructing LCH because to me it's just 
the it does the better job. Uh, that is purely personal opinion, you know, each to their own. Uh, and and maybe it's a per image thing, you know, maybe maybe it just works on this image, and maybe on another image it won't. Uh, I guess that's you know. That's the beauty of post-processing photos, people. Uh, every image is different. So a couple of things to add. Uh, just getting back to the Fuji thing and the X-Trans sensors. I feel like I dodged a bullet. Because at the time that I was... Uh, well, well, at the time that I ended up buying the A7 III... I did briefly toy with the idea of jumping ship from Sony to Fuji with the X-T2, I think it was at the time. Uh, and I kind of, you know, with the hindsight of the last three, four years, however long that's been, the number of times I've seen reference to, you know, this will only work with Bayer sensors or, you know, this won't work with X-Trans sensors. And I think, wow, really dodged a bullet there. Like, I'm sure the Fuji does a beautiful job and I'm sure it takes gr great photos. Uh, but, yeah, number of times I've seen that. I'm kind of glad that I've stayed with Sony. Um, just to go back to the comment I made at the beginning of the video. The last four weeks, because it's been that long since I put out a video... I've really been struggling to sit down and record something because I'm I'm feeling a little underwhelmed by Darktable 4. And it's not the software itself. Like, love the software. Have done for six years now. It was more the, the changelog. You know, looking at the, the blog post of what's new and blah, blah, blah in Darktable 4. And it was like, yeah, yeah, okay, great, whatever, next. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else felt that way, but it just felt like it was all sort of esoteric under the hood stuff, like Filmic V6 and, you know, a new algorithm for highlight reconstruction. I don't know. Am I becoming jaded? Am I bored? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe I just need to get out and shoot more. Um, on that front, I'm about to head off on a week and a half road trip with my wife and another couple uh, of friends from Sydney. So there will be a lot of shooting done over the next couple of weeks. So I will hopefully come back with some images and feel a bit more inspired to sit down and talk about stuff. But yeah, just going through the change log, it was just like, yeah, okay, struggling a bit. There is the collection filters module, which is a new module, um, which... To be honest, I'm, I'm with Aurelia, and I don't feel like it was a necessary introduction. I thought the collections module already gave you all of the tools that you needed to, you know, build a collection based on multiple criteria already. Um, I think the intent of whoever designed it was to make it a little more graphical so that you didn't need to understand all of the you know various operators like colons and brackets and whatever you know that you would use ordinarily in the collections filter but i do feel like it replicates a lot of stuff unnecessarily anyway we'll, we will get to that when i sit down to do that video which i will try and do uh immediately after my road trip all right, people, I will leave it there. Um, yeah, as for the highlight reconstruction, I think you've got to take it on a per-image basis and decide what works best under the circumstances. All righty, questions, comments, feedback, sing out down below, and I will catch you in the next one.